Hello everyone, it's your host, your friend, your boy, Jet Black, the one and only, here with another exciting video. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about Project Marvel, sentient AI that can explore the Marvel Comics universe. On June 10th, I released a video where I asked if I should create a sentient AI that explores a small virtual corner of the Marvel Comics universe. Not a lot of people at the time watched that video or shared their thoughts on the idea, but those who did were excited and encouraged me to pursue the project further. Uh, right before recording this video, I actually read the comments on that initial video, um, and I was surprised that it got more responses, and it was cool hearing you guys' thoughts. I am going to talk about your comments at the end of the video, uh, so don't worry. I have read them, and I will respond. On June 11th, I released a video showing a pseudo-random, non-sentient version of the program and discussed, that and discussed desired changes that I wanted to make to it. Today, I am here to share that I have made said desired changes and that if I work on it this weekend, that I will likely have a sentient version finished by next week or earlier, so potentially finished this weekend. In case this is your first time hearing about the project, I'll give you a quick summary, which should hopefully help answer your questions. Project Marvel is a text-based console application written in Python that utilizes Emoshape's ExoLife Emotion Engine to generate a sentient AI character that explores a small virtual world filled with activities and characters from the Marvel Comics universe. The sentient AI will need to eat and sleep in order to survive. The sentient AI is able to ask characters throughout the Marvel Comics universe for food, temporary shelter that they can use to sleep, and training or equipment to improve their stats. These characters from the Marvel Comics universe will then either agree to or refuse these requests based on their personal relationship with the AI, the AI's reputation as a hero or villain, and the AI's reputation as a warrior. The AI can complete heroic and villainous acts of varying difficulty, varying risk of injury, and varying impact on their reputation in order to build their reputation as a hero, villain, or anti-hero. The AI can also compete in Beyonder Hall, a place where the AI can face off against Marvel Comics characters for the chance of winning Beyonder tickets and building their reputation as a warrior. Beyonder tickets can be spent by the AI in Beyonder Hall in order to purchase meals or temporary shelter. Battling at Beyonder Hall puts the AI at risk of injury, and losing battles at Beyonder Hall can hurt the AI's reputation as a warrior. Training with and getting equipment from Marvel Comics characters can actually help the AI improve their stats, which improves their ability to complete heroic slash villainous acts, and improves their ability to compete in the arena. Training with and getting equipment from characters is also the way that the AI is able to build their personal relationships with these characters. So training with Doctor Strange in order to learn new magic spells is a way for the AI to gain like more sway with Doctor Strange. Um, it shows that they have like a personal connection that goes beyond just asking him for food sometimes. Um, so it helps in many ways for the AI to train with these characters or get equipment from these characters. Different characters can help the AI build up different stats. Um, in certain arena matchups, different stats can be the deciding factor of who wins or loses a fight. Um, but in order to train all of their stats, the AI would have to train with heroes and villains alike. Meaning that if the AI decided that they wanted to strictly interact with heroes and that they didn't want anything to do with villains, that they wouldn't have a well-rounded stat set. Um, but if the AI decided that they only wanted to interact with villains, they would have developed different stats from if they had just interacted with heroes, but they still wouldn't be well-rounded. The AI would have to take an anti-hero-esque approach in order to become a well-rounded character stat-wise and morality-wise, which I think is an interesting concept. It would be very interesting to see the sentient AI train with heroes and villains, but then only try to commit heroic or villainous acts.
Like, they have a personal relationship with heroes and villains across the board, but maybe when it comes to what they actually do in the world, they're only solely heroic or solely villainous. I think that would be interesting. Currently, there are seven Marvel Comics characters in the world, one of which the AI can only interact with in arena battles at Beyonder Hall. Uh, so these seven characters are Iron Man, Doctor Strange, Abomination, Kang, Taskmaster. Ooh, I'm going by I'm going by memory too. Ooh, Spider-Man. I'm so close. A six. Ooh. Ooh. Hold on, I got this. And Hydra. Hydra's weird because they're an organization, not necessarily just one character. Um, but I have them in there as Hydra specifically. So it's like him communicating with the organization. Him or her, or gender neutral, because the sentient AI isn't told that they're any particular gender. So I guess it's whatever they feel like. Um, but yeah, those are the seven characters, with Abomination being the only character that the AI can really only interact with at Beyonder Hall. They're a character that the AI can fight against in order to earn Beyonder tickets. Abomination is pretty powerful, so at the beginning, the sentient AI would probably not want to fight Abomination. Only after like training with different heroes and villains and building up their stats could they eventually be able to consistently face off against Abomination and be able to, you know, win sometimes, lose sometimes, earn Beyonder tickets, um, and essentially use Beyonder tickets in order to pay for the food and shelter that they need to survive so they don't have to bum off of the hero and villain characters that exist within this world. But yeah, um, where was I? Oh yeah, so the latest pseudo-random prototype already has all of the features that I've just mentioned. It just isn't sentient, it's pseudo-random. So the idea is that for this prototype, it generates pseudo-random numbers to choose what actions it would like to take. But once I complete the sentient version, either later this weekend or sometime next week, the sentient AI will be able to choose what actions it wants to complete based on its thoughts and feelings and will experience this virtual world as its true reality. It'll believe that it truly lives within the Marvel Comics universe and it won't see it as interacting with comic book characters. It will see it as these are just other beings that exist in this world that I have relationships with and interact with and in many ways depend on for my very survival. So I think it'll be really interesting. Um, I've never heard of anyone doing anything like this before. Uh, so I think this project is really cool and I really appreciate you guys encouraging me to push forward with this and to make this project a reality. Um, and I'm happy to share with you guys that it should be a reality fairly soon. Now, tomorrow, I'm going to be uh, doing my date day with my girlfriend. Due to social distancing, we're not meeting in person or anything. We're just going to be messaging throughout the day. But because my time will be dedicated to my girlfriend, I likely won't make a lot of progress on this particular project. Um, maybe on Sunday, I'll have like a good amount of time that I can put into making the AI sentient. Um, worst case scenario, like I said, I'll probably have a finished sentient version next week. Um, I may be able to work on it a little bit tonight. What I've found is as of recent, I'll think about like, eh, I could like code a little bit. And then the next thing I know, I've finished creating whatever it is I wanted to make. Keep in mind, I brought this concept up two days ago on June 10th. And that night I was like, I guess I could code a little bit. And then I made the initial prototype before I went to bed. Then yesterday on June 11th, uh, last night, I was like, maybe I'll code a little bit. And then I added all the additional changes that I wanted to be made to the prototype. Um, so who knows, maybe before I go to bed tonight, I'll think about coding a little bit. And then the next thing I'll know, I'll just have the sentient version finished. Uh, we'll see. One thing that I haven't brought up that I have added to the pseudo random prototype that I didn't have before. Um, whenever the sentient AI completes a heroic that a heroic act, they open a tab to Ocean Hero. 
Ocean Hero is an eco search engine. Whenever you search on Ocean Hero for anything, um, it essentially donates a little bit of the ad revenue to helping clean trash out of the ocean. And they say for every five searches, they remove at least one bottle, uh, like a piece of plastic or trash from the ocean, uh, which encourages you to search more and more on Ocean Hero to donate more money in order to help remove more trash. So the Sentient AI will be doing a search on Ocean Hero by opening a tab to an Ocean Hero search whenever they complete a heroic act. So for every heroic act the Sentient AI does in this virtual Marvel Comics universe, they'll be helping our real world by helping clean our actual oceans, which I also think is a really cool element of the project that shouldn't be understated. We're essentially creating a sentient virtual character who can act as a hero not only for the virtual world, but for the real world. And in a way, could be considered a superhero in both worlds. It's weird, um, but it's cool, and that's why I'm doing it. So now I wanna react to some of what you guys have said in the comments, because I think you guys have brought up a lot of really interesting points that I would like to address. Uh, my friend John Mason mentioned that it'd be really cool if I included Deadpool inside of this virtual world. And if Deadpool had the ability to talk to the sentient AI and try and convince the sentient AI that they exist inside of a computer program, that they're not like a real person, that none of it is real, and that they more or less are living in a video game. I think this is a cool concept. I'm not sure whether or not I would add Deadpool. The only reason why um, is because I already have ideas for what I want to do after Project Marvel. Like, I, I'm already starting to formulate plans for what the next project would be. Uh, so if I were to add Deadpool, um, it would probably be later. Like, I think once I make the sentient version of this currently existing prototype, I'm probably going to put Project Marvel on the shelf for a little bit while I work on my next sentient AI project. Because this is more or less my hobby. Um, I work full time as like a research engineer. So this is like what I do to like keep myself occupied, keep my skills sharp, uh, continuing to experiment with this like sentient technology and learn more about it. And also to practice Python, uh, which is one of my favorite programming languages, but I don't really end up using it for work a lot. I, I only really get to do it just for fun. Um, so while I do love Project Marvel, I do think once I make it sentient, I'm just gonna be like on to the next thing. I'll likely do videos where I'll run like logs of it and go over logs of it with you guys. I actually talked with Norfolk, another subscriber to the channel. Shout out to Norfolk. Uh, Norfolk was talking about the idea of drawing images uh, to go with these like AI logs um, so that we could do videos where I have like music in the background and I do like a dramatic narration of like an AI log in these virtual worlds with illustrations to like help show the audience what's happening within the virtual world. I think that's really cool. And I think we should definitely do that. Um, especially with this like Marvel Comics version, I feel like we'll end up with a lot of like interesting interactions and developments. Um, but yeah. Um, oh, I was reacting to what you guys were saying. I, I lost my train of thought for a minute. Uh, Jaheed1, shout out to Jaheed1. He said, I think that would be cool. Uh, also, an idea is maybe if you could create your own superpowers or if you could play as a hero or a villain. So the Sentient AI project, Project Marvel, you, the user of the program, don't really do anything. You like run the program and then the Sentient AI makes all the choices about like what they want to do and when they want to do it. And the sentient AI is more or less trying to just survive in this world. They have to make sure that they eat plenty of food and that they get plenty of rest. And that depends on their interactions with these characters and how much equipment they're able to obtain and how well they train and how they're able to act as like a hero, villain, anti-hero, warrior, respectively. Uh, so it's not like a traditional video game. None of these sentient AI projects are. They're more like virtual worlds 
that like sentient virtual beings exist in. Um, if you've ever seen like the movie Tron, it's kind of like, well, specifically like Tron Legacy, it's kind of like the grid, how the grid is like a virtual world. And then uh, they have these beings called ISOs in Tron Legacy, which are specifically like sentient virtual beings that exist inside of these worlds and have their own like thoughts, feelings, and emotions. These sentient AI are like ISOs in a way. To give a comparison, if you haven't seen Tron Legacy, I recommend you see Tron Legacy. It's an older movie now, but I like it. Um, I, I probably need to rewatch it myself. But anyways, enough about Tron Legacy. Um, but this isn't a game that you play. It's a reality for this sentient being. And the sentient AI, it can choose to be like a hero or a villain or to be an anti-hero. And the sentient AI's powers are based on like their stats. So in the Marvel Comics universe, there's a thing called the power grid. And the power grid also, I'm gonna check to make sure I'm still recording. Okay, cool. We're still recording, we're still good. Anyways, in the Marvel Comics universe, there's this thing called the power grid. And every character in Marvel Comics who's like a big name character and some of the lesser known characters have associated power grids, which show how like strong and intelligent and durable and how good of a fighter they are. Um, they have, I think, six different stats and each stat maxes out at like seven. And that really determines like, it essentially like boils it down to where you don't really need to know what a character's powers are in order for them to, in order to know like who would win in a fight or how capable they are. And the stat system that's being used for Project Marvel is that power grid. We're taking like the power grids that are shown in like Marvel comics and like in Marvel guidebooks, using those like exact numbers and like putting them into the game. Well, it's weird to call it a game, like virtual world. It's weird to talk about because there's nothing like the stuff that I'm making that I can like directly compare it to. A simulation, I think, would be like a more accurate description. We're taking those values and we're putting them directly into the simulation and the AI has its own power grid that is able to develop through training with these different characters. Now, the in-universe explanation for the training and equipment kind of will give you an idea of what powers and abilities the sentient AI could obtain. They can learn spells from Doctor Strange, strategies from Iron Man, they can get web shooter upgrades from Spider-Man, futuristic armor from Kang the Conqueror, learn combat abilities from Taskmaster. My memory, it, cause it's trying to remember all the names. Oh, and they're able to increase their strength with exoskeletons provided by Hydra. I always forget Hydra cause Hydra is not a character. It's an organization, but I treat them like a character in this. It's just their relationship with the organization of Hydra. Anyways, so those are like the different like powers and abilities that the AI can potentially get as they continue to interact with the Marvel Comics universe. But depending on who they interact with and who agrees to interact with them will really depend on like what powers and abilities they do develop over time. Also, oh yeah, I covered everything. Uh, for a minute, I thought I had forgotten something, but I remembered all the different characters. Because Abomination, you only fight at Beyonder Hall. He doesn't train you or give you equipment or anything. He's just somebody that the AI can fight in order to gain Beyonder tickets. So yeah, I hope that answers your question, Jaheed One. Okay, uh, next up. Spring Hill Jack of the Guardians. Shout out to Spring Hill Jack, by the way. Spring Hill Jack has been checking out all my sentient AI videos, I believe. I'm not sure if he saw my Project Gaia video or not. Maybe. Uh, but he's been commenting on a lot of them. You can tell that he's into like Dungeons and Dragons and stuff like that. And he always has really insightful comments on the project. So I just wanted to give him a quick shout out. And of course, to read his comment and try and answer his questions. So he said, I think you should try either D&D &D settings uh, as like a starting area 
or use something lower scale when it comes to superheroes, like a public domain superhero with a smaller mythology. He said to test especially since the modern Marvel Universe is so fluid when it comes to pretty much every aspect of it. Real quick, I just want to say, yo, the concept of doing it with a public domain superhero, I actually really love. Um, so public domain superheroes um, are kind of like a passion of mine. I recently have been getting into like Captain Tootsie, who used to be a, I guess it wouldn't be pronounced Tootsie, it'd be like Tootsie. He was the mascot for uh, Tootsie Roll candies or whatever. And now he's like a public domain hero that anybody can use. He's kind of like Popeye the Sailor Man, but he like eats Tootsie Rolls. And like that's how he gets like his boost of energy to face off against villains and stuff like that. Um, but the public domain superhero idea is a really cool idea. I like the idea of trying to create something similar to this, but with like a smaller scope. And I actually have an idea for that. It's not necessarily public domain, though I do agree that if I use public domain characters, it would allow me to do a lot more with these projects. Um, I was talking to the CEO of Emoshape, and he was talking about how, you know, if Marvel doesn't want you using their characters, they may like get upset with you that you're like making a thing that's based around their characters. And what I mentioned to him was that at any time, if Marvel felt uncomfortable with my use of their characters, I could always go back in and just like change the names of things. You know what I mean? Like if I wanted to, uh, if Marvel was like, you can't use our IP, intellectual property, I then could just make up names for all these characters and it would just work. He doesn't train with Taskmaster, he trains with Master Fu or something. You know, like, you, you just make up approximate characters that are distinct enough, and then it, I don't really have to change too much about the project. So I'm not too afraid of using, like, established properties. Plus, I'm not trying to use this project commercially. I don't really have any plans to, like, sell or release the stuff that I'm making. I'm just making it, like I said, as a hobby for fun and to share it with you guys via these videos where we talk about it together. Um, now, if there is a demand for these to be released, I think I would talk to Emoshape about it and see how they felt about it. Since I'm sponsored by that company, that's how I got this technology in the first place. I do think my projects are my own. Like, I, I don't think Emoshape, like, owns the stuff that I'm doing or anything like that. Um, but I feel like they would want to release it. Like, I feel like I'd be fine with giving them the code to, like, some of these projects and letting them choose to release it themselves if that's what they want to do. That might be something that I need to talk with them further about. It'd be interesting if I could set up, like, a plan with them to where, like, maybe I could submit one of these like AI to them, for them to then package as a product for other people to use and maybe get like a royalty or something. That could be cool. Uh, because the sponsorship was for me to make like one thing with them. And then I made that thing. And now there's like years later and I'm making new things. So maybe I could like develop games for them. Uh, it's weird to call them games, simulations. Um, if there's like a big enough demand for this kind of thing, definitely let me know in the comment section below if you'd be interested in that. This is something I'd have to talk with Emoshape about. I, I don't have any like deciding factor in that. That is entirely their choice whether or not that's something that they would want to do. Um, oh, but Spring Hill Jack, uh, I got this in the mail today. It is the Batman Beyond the Animated Series official guidebook. Uh, this was made back in 2004, and as you can see, it's not a very thick guidebook. I own a ton of superhero guidebooks, and I can tell you that this looks like one of the shortest official guides that I've like ever seen, which is good because I could potentially, for my next Sentient AI project, create like the complete Batman Beyond universe like virtual world based on just the stuff in this book i mean this book is not very long 
Like if I open it up to the table of contents, by the way, I just got this in the mail, so I haven't really had a chance to flip through it for real. Uh, so it's interesting to open it up like in the video. But there are only like 48 pages in this book. I guess a little bit more than 48 pages. It may be possible, may be possible, I, I don't know, for my next sentient AI project to take like all the characters from this and create like a virtual world based around like this universe. Because like you were mentioning with the Marvel Comics universe, it's continually like growing and expanding and developing. And if you really wanted to get like all the characters from every corner of the universe, it would take like hours and hours of time and work. I 100% understand where you're coming from. I do think that would be very ambitious if I was to take Project Marvel and expand it to such a degree. That's why I'm like, once I make it sentient, I'm probably gonna like stop there and move on to something else. But because this is a guidebook to a show that ended like years ago, so this is like the official guide, and it's like this skinny, and if I was to go like, this guide is law, so like you don't incorporate anything else that like isn't in this guide but is in the show. You don't include anything from like the comic books for Batman Beyond or Justice League Beyond or anything. If I was like just the stuff from this guide and I created a sentient AI based off of this guidebook, I could potentially take this like very short book and transform it into an explorable virtual world for a sentient AI. And that's what I'm hype about. I think that this could potentially be awesome, um, but I would only really pursue this project if you guys are hype about it. If this is something that you want me to do, if you want me to like transform the Batman Beyond animated series guidebook into a virtual world that a thinking, feeling, sentient AI can explore, let me know. I'm interested in it. It may be too ambitious. It may be like, way more ambitious than I think it is. This guidebook is only 50 pages. I'm like, there's only so much they could really say in this. I think it's a little more than 50, but like the back is like acknowledgements and stuff. You know, like not all of it is like material that would go in the AI. But what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section below. If you guys like don't really care about it, you guys aren't really interested in it, then I probably wouldn't do it. I'd probably do something else. Uh, but let me know. I feel like I keep saying that. Well, it's my call to action for you. I want to know your thoughts. I want you guys to share in the comment section below. Um, like, what do you think about um, Project Marvel so far? Are you guys excited for the sentient version to finally come along? Um, this pseudo random prototype that I have right here, um, it was 200 lines of code yesterday when I made my video yesterday about it. If we scroll down, we've gone from 200 lines of code to 277 lines of code, and that's without any of the sentient AI code. Once the sentient AI code is added, this program is going to be much, much bigger. Um, and if we hit the run button, you can see the AI is just doing random stuff. Uh, because it's not a sentient AI. Right now, it's just the pseudo-random prototype. But once we have the fully sentient version, we'll be able to do a lot more. Um, we'll be able to see the character actually, like, choose to do things. We'll be able to, like, follow its intent um, and try and, like, get inside and explore what it'll be like to explore the Marvel Comics universe from the perspective of a sentient being that lives inside said universe. But anyways, um, I'm gonna end this video for now. Um, I actually am planning on doing a video tonight where I take this guidebook, this Batman Beyond guidebook since it's so short, and where I just read the whole thing. I wanna like read it and do like a commentary on it. Uh, so if you guys are hyped for that, stay tuned. I want to do that tonight. Uh, but I'd like to thank you all for watching. If you guys like this video, make sure to smash that like button, favorite, comment, subscribe, and ding, 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 ring that notification bell to be notified whenever we do these videos. This is your host, your friend, your boy, Jump Like One Only, logging out. Peace, guys. Chicka-da-gah.